consider some real life examples for optimization the first one can be the global petroleum refiner who decides to buy crude oil every day so there are two main things that he has to optimize first is shipping cost second is quality of product so a maximum profit optimization model he has to obtain in such a manner that the shipping cost can be minimized and the quality of product can be maximized so he has to search several resources for that he, and he has to uh, pick the best suppliers or best vendors and at the same time he has to work on the shipping cost uh, maybe he has to select best route for uh, transferring his uh, raw materials so all those things are to be considered to get the optimized solution in real life examples so in the second we can consider the flight paths they are also optimized depending upon where the uh, plane has to go all the flight paths are uh, optimized on real time so the first most optimization problem was studied in 1930s and 1940s and it was related to the army's desire to meet nutritional requirements of the field while minimizing the cost so the main goal of this first optimization problem was to find the cost effective combination of foods that will satisfy all the daily nutritional requirements of the army persons and in this uh, process the constraints were to regulate the number of calories and amount of vitamins minerals fats sodium and cholesterol as well so if we consider the bubble formulation of this problem it is basically all about minimizing the cost of menu without Uh, compromising the nutritional requirements of the army persons so there are two trade offs that on which the team has to work upon at the same time they have to provide best nutrition to the army people but at the same time they have to minimize the cost of the uh, menu so this was the first optimization problem and after that several other uh, situations were studied and based on that the researchers the new age researchers developed some approaches that can do the optimization things automatically and mainly these were inspired from some natural phenomenon and some artificial intelligence based algorithms and they can be used in different scenarios so a typical optimization problem can be basically a pattern classification problem in which objective is to classify or recognize the specific pattern and some basic examples of this can be recognizing characters signatures classifying mic mic microstructures for recognizing composition of alloys facial feature recognition to identify humans for secure access and identifying cancerous cells for therapy so we can say that it includes some real life situations some medical issues or maybe some industrial problems also so optimization can be applied in every sphere now we have uh, different types of optimization techniques many of them are uh, inspired from natural phenomena but here we have some commonly used ones and i'm just going to throw a light on uh, these and then we will be going in detail with the particle swarm optimization so first of all we have genetic algorithm as the name indicates it is inspired from the genetic behaviors of the living things so this algorithm was first given by john holland in 1970s and these genetic algorithms are basically adaptive heuristic or problem dependent search algorithms in which some natural selection and genetic procedures are applied to find out the most optimal solutions these gas simulate the survival of the fittest among all the individuals or we can say the pollutants in the uh, particle or the uh, population and over consecutive generations they try uh, try to find out the most uh, efficient solution and in this genetic process uh, algorithm uh, optimization what we have we have three main op operators the first one is selection operator it equates to the survival of fittest we have uh, for example maybe 50 or uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, particles at initial stage but not all of them can be selected to find out the solution from considered problem so in that case what we have to do we need to identify best possible attributes of those particles and then select the most uh, fittest ones then we have to proceed to the next uh, stage that is crossover it is basically 
meeting between individuals that were selected at the first stage so when we selected the fittest ones the crossover task is implemented over them and then we get the next generation now what happens in genetic algorithm our main requirement is to sustain with the best possible attributes of one generation and shift them to the next generation so that they can work efficiently at next generation also but at the same time we need to make some random modifications so that a different problem space can be optimized or they can work efficiently as compared to their uh, parents so at the last stage we have mutation at this stage what we do we apply some random modifications it can be based on their characteristics or maybe uh, if we are working on some image kind of problem it can be related to their intensity or uh, maybe their presentation so these kind of modifications are introduced depending upon what kind of problem we are working then comes art colony optimization in this case uh, the main idea is inspired from how ants behave when they search for food or when they uh, act differently in the environment or in nature so what ants do basically while searching for food first of all they find a food source then they walk back to the colony in this process they leave some pheromones behind while moving to the source or coming back to the colony and then the followers in the team because ants are always in groups so one or two maybe few of them identify the food source they walk to that and then come back to their colony while leaving some pheromones behind then the remaining uh, ants in the group they start following that particular track and they start exploiting that so, uh, source and they bring out the food once the food source is depleted the food ends completely the root is no longer populated because those ants stop spreading pheromones in that uh, track and slowly it decays they start searching for other food source and follow the same procedure so this kind of technique is also applied in some real life examples for example uh, when we are working on some changing topologies or uh, we are working on some graphs in that case we can have this ant colony optimization then we have artificial bee colony in this case uh, what we have is the algorithm consists of mainly three bee groups the first one is employed bees second is onlooker bees and third one is scout bees so the first group of bees what they do they randomly keep on exploring the surrounding area and then they return to the hive with information related to the landscape this explorative search information is shared with onlooker bees in the uh, group and then those onlooker bees start evaluating the information that is brought by the employed bees and based on that information they gather some information about uh, neighborhood and can identify the source of food for them and in uh, real life uh, examples we can consider the use of relative wheel method for this purpose when we have to implement this kind of algorithm in some uh, artificial intelligence systems or maybe to handle some uh, optimization things we can consider the relative wheel method to select the best possible uh, target uh, that can be exploited by these wheels and finally the scout bees start performing the random search uh, based on the information and the solutions provided by onlooker bees and then they start exploitation so they work step by step to get the uh, food and in the meanwhile they also try to minimize the time for uh, searching multiple sources because they share information with each other and identify the best possible source and start exploiting that after that they will start the next target next we have bacteria foraging optimization this was developed recently in 2002 and uh, now several researchers are working on this uh, bacteria foraging optimization in this case the key idea is group of foraging strategy of a swarm for equally bacteria in multi optimal function optimization and what it does bacteria search for nutrients to maximize energy obtained for unit time and in every living being they keep on following this phenomenon and then 
individual bacteriums also communicate with others by sending some signals whenever they get information about best source of energy they send or transmit information to the remaining bacteria in the area so that they can also exploit that source the process in which bacterium moves by taking small steps while searching for nutrients it is called chemotaxis now the key idea of bacteria forging optimization is to mimic the chemotactic movement of the virtual bacteria in the problem search space next we have simulated annealing it was developed in 1983 but at the initial uh, stage this uh, algorithm didn't uh, work well and very few researchers used it but now it is gaining more popularity and several researchers have also derived uh, some other versions of this simulated annealing so this was originally insp inspired from the process of annealing in metal work this is a very common process where we heat up the metal and then cool it down to a specific temperature so that the metal can be shaped to achieve some specific uh, orientation so in this annealing process it is all about heating and cooling a material to alter its physical properties due to the changes in internal structure so these physical properties they will vary how the temperature is increased and reduced so we have to identify an optimal solution for the variation of that temperature to mean or max or from the maximum to minimum range because if it is cooled down fast the metal may turn out to be brittle or if it is cooled down slowly the metal may not retain its uh, desired properties that are required to achieve the final structure so in that case what we have to do we have to set some specific temperature levels and cool down the metal stage by stage to achieve final structure so this is generally a problem independent approach and it is applicable to both large as well as discrete search spaces uh, for problems where finding an approximate global optimum is more important than finding a precise local optimum this kind of problem can be uh, sol solved with the help of this simulated annealing algorithm then we have bat optimization this is clearly based on the echolocation behavior of bats so you might have heard so many times that uh, bats always keep on uh, em emitting some loud uh, ranges or uh, loud pulses and it helps them to uh, get idea about the surrounding areas the return of those pulses help them to identify whether there is some obstacle around or uh, some relevant sources around so they keep on using this phenomenon on regular basis so some researchers have also observed the impact of this phenomenon and they are trying to implement this in some uh, problem spaces such as for uh, medical imaging or uh, maybe some industrial applications also so this is commonly being used in data mining clustering and classification problems but uh, we need to do is the echolocation uh, leads to the sense of direction for bats and they come to know about the difference between uh, food prey or some background barriers etc and it may seem a magical way in uh, nature but when it is implied to the optimization problems in uh, real time it can provide some amazing results to uh, data mining and trusting problem because it can create the uh, information based on the surrounding area or uh, in which problem space we are working so ultimately we come to the particle swarm optimization so we will be studying this particular optimization technique in detail and we will be identifying how to take it from the nature and uh, implement in on real time scenarios and how the things are optimized st stage by stage so first of all this is a population based stochastic optimization technique that was developed by eberhardt and kennedy in 1995 and it is mainly inspired from the social behavior of bird flocking and fish cooling so in the process the pso is success successfully applied to the area of function function optimization in artificial neural network training fuzzy system controls as well as in some areas where genetic algorithms are applied and many other uh, applications can be found because there are some derived versions of pso also that can be used in various uh, uh, circumstances so how this particular optimization technique was originated 
this is this technique is mainly inspired from the natural social behavior of uh, insects fishes or we can say birds uh, you might have seen them moving in groups this is a common phenomenon that we see when they start uh, their search for food in the morning you might have see uh, seen many birds circling in the uh, air and they're moving together to find or to exploit some food source so this is a natural phenomenon but we can also use in it in some optimization problems and how it works step by step first of all in nature what happens let us imagine a flock of birds that is circling over a particular area and maybe they are smelling some hidden food source or they are getting some idea about where they can find food so based on that information they are just circling over a particular area now one bird that is closest to the food it starts chirping louder and all the other other birds start following its direction because they consider that the louder bird is knowing the uh, information about the placement of that food source so in this way they share information with each other and start following the uh, most informed bird they will follow a pattern behind him further while moving ahead if some other bird comes close to the target to the food source it starts chirping louder than the previous bird so all the other birds come to know that now we have to follow this particular bird so in this way they keep on forming different uh, maybe they will move in different directions and uh, create different patterns while searching for the food source and once this tightening pattern uh, continues and it reach to the uh, final destination or to the food source these birds start exploiting that particular source so this is a consistent behavior that uh, uh, swarms follow and uh, we can mimic it to some optimization problems in our real life scenarios then the concept of pso when we have to implement it what we have is there are number of iterations in case of natural things or natural phenomenon what we have is birds are chirping louder than the previous bird and this is we can call a iteration the change of iteration and after every iteration some other bird will be guiding the rest of the group and in the similar manner when we have to implement pso in real life scenarios there is a group of variables that will have uh, some uh, fitness values or on which we have to work to optimize the situation and then they are sharing information with each other and they try to move closer to the target that they have to achieve and they keep on sharing information with each other and improving after each iteration the process behind pso is like the single solution that we call bird in nature that call particle when we apply the optimization technique then all the particles have some fitness value same as the birds have some fitness value uh, about uh, how much information about food source they can uh, retain and how much they can fly how far they can go to get the food so there are so many factors that define their fitness value depending upon that uh, conditions in the uh, optimization sphere or uh, the problem we are working the particles again will have some attributes that will define their fitness conditions and these are evaluated by the fitness function that is required to be optimized and have velocities that direct the flying of particles so for example if we consider that uh, we are optimizing an image for its intensity values maybe we have a degraded image and then we have to increase its intensity values to get the best possible outcomes so in that case our fitness values will be defined based on that particular image and we have some targets or maybe we can say that target intensity level that we have to achieve and all the particles or the pixels in that particular image space will behave according to that target and they have to improve themselves after every iteration to achieve that final value so the particles keep on flying in the problem space and they try to identify the optimal solution for the task that is given to them now here we have a graph in which we can see the behavior of this particle swarm optimization you can see here that we have five particles 50 particles and 500 particles and based on them here is some uh, graph plotted so what it is depicting basically when we have five particles this red graph is showing the behavior of the search space we can imagine this in some other way for example we have uh, five 
intellectual persons in the room and they are discussing they are presenting their views on a specific problem so we have five persons only and we have limited viewpoints and there may, may be some variation in their viewpoints and we may have to uh, take longer time to identify the best possible outcome out of that so this red pattern shows so much variation so it basically depicts that when we have lesser number of particles or lesser number of sources of information the identification of optimal solution is little complicated as there are so many variations or fluctuations involved in the uh, iteration then if we have 50 particles we have this yellow pattern it is little bit improved as compared to these five uh, particles but still there are so much variations again if we have 500 particles you can see little improved performance or we can see that stabilized uh, outcome so when we have higher number of population in pso it can provide us more uh, efficient solution or maybe can bring out uh, more optimal outcomes in lesser time but again actual decision about number of swarms or number of particles in the swarm that depends upon what kind of problem we are dealing and whether we have to uh, maximize something we have to minimize something or we have to or what kind of optimization we need to achieve so all these decisions are based on the problem space in which we are working then we have three main uh, things while implementing pso the particle swarm optimization the first one is the best solution or fitness value that a particular particle or particular pixel has achieved so far and it is represented with present best or p best value then we have best solution achieved by any particle in the population and that is called as global population or global best or g best for example we have this particular image and there are so many pixels there are millions of pixels in this image so this particular pixel it has certain fitness value that will be its particular present best value and then when we compare fitness of all these particles or all these pixels may be based on their intensity levels or uh, some other criteria that we are using depending upon the problem space when we compare them all then we get for example this is having best fitness in comparison to all then it will be called as global best third thing we have is local best values this is implied when we have arranged the problem space in some topological order or we have defined some neighborhoods we will be discussing this further uh, in detail that how this neighborhood thing is applied in a problem space where we are working on pso so first of all there are three main things uh, that pso need to work upon the first one is target value or condition that it has to achieve second is the global best value that we defined uh, recently it indicates the particle data that is currently closest to the target for example if there are hundreds or thousands of particles any one of them may be having a value closer to the target so other particles are required to improve in such a manner that they can achieve that global best value and they can further move closer to the target value then we have a stopping criteria the stopping criteria is defined uh, just to assure that we get solution in a required time and if we have to make some initial changes we can make that on time for example if we have uh, given certain target value to the uh, algorithm but it is not able to achieve it and the program keeps on running and running for maybe weeks and months then it cannot provide us a desired solution because it is taking so much time so in that case what we have to do is we have to define a stopping condition for example maybe on the base of time we can say that it has to run for 30 minutes and if it is not able to identify a required solution or the best possible outcome then we can uh, stop the algorithm we can go to the initial level and then we can just improve the initial conditions maybe we can change the uh, size of population we can change the number of iterations we can change some other parameters and then we can start implementing the algorithm again and then try to identify the optimal solution out of that so for this purpose we need to define a target value uh, or uh, we can uh, or a stopping value so that uh, algorithm stops it if it is not able to optimize the condition so that we can make the changes then we have 
that each particle first of all contains some data representing the possible solution so every particle is having certain kind of information that it can uh, contain within it and share with some other particles secondly it has a velocity value that indicates how much data can be changed in a, a particular problem space and how it can vary then comes p best value it indicates the closest the particle's data has ever come to the target so this is the present best value of each particle in the problem space and it has to uh, be improved after every iteration to achieve the target value or uh, to the fitness value that we are uh, trying to achieve at final stage then here comes the concept of neighborhood where that local best value is applied so what we have is for example this is a particular image on which we are working now instead of implying our optimization algorithm on this entire problem space on this entire image at once we are creating some local areas these small sections and then we try to apply our pso on these sections one by one this is one two three four sections we divide here and then we implement pso at this local level and after each iteration what we are trying to do is there are two things when we do not have this localization issue we have a complete problem space which have only two things one is our p best value and second is our g best value what we have to do is every time we need to compare p best values of all the particles and try to bring it closer to the g best value that is global best value that is represented by any one of those uh, all the particles we have to achieve that g best value and that g best value has to be closer to the target so we have to do only this thing we compare all the particles and try to improve its condition to g best value but in case of neighborhood what we have is we have smaller sections and now instead of comparing this p best value to the global best value what we are doing is we are comparing it with the local best value when we have implied pso in this first section we are having a p best value here and an l best value here instead of comparing p best of every particle to the global best we are comparing it with the local best value in every section we are trying to improve every particle's present best value to achieve this local best value and finally the local best value of each one of these sections is compared with the global best value and then we are improving the condition step by step and these kind of implementations are more useful when we have a larger problem space on which we cannot implement exploration in one go because it will consume so much time when we have so much particles and every time they have to compare with each other and they have to bring out the best solution by comparing to the global best value so instead of making them all work together we are trying to uh, implement the algorithm in smaller sections so that we can get local best value from every section and then compare that to the global best value so what we can say that for this particular one area that we have a division over here for this particular area the local best value of this particular area is basically the global best value of this one so each one of them is having their own global best value if we confine to that particular area but that global best value is actually a local best value of this entire space so we are doing a step by step increment to achieve the final fitness value so how we can understand this comparison thing it is based on this topological assignment in first case in a what we have is single sided uh, evaluation in this case what we have is we compare individuals only to the next particle to uh, them here you can see that we are comparing the uh, p best values of a particle to the next p best value they are not able to compare with all the particles in the search space in the second case they are able to compare their value with the left and right or we can say that they are able to share information with the particle to the left and right only in third case when we have fully connected topology they are always able to share information with all the particles available in the search space so this may be more time consuming if we have a larger search space but if you have a smaller one then this can be implementable 
Then we have isolated topology. In this case, individuals are allowed to compare only in the specified groups. For example, these are small groups. They are allowed to compare in this. Then And then maybe finally, we can compare the best values of these groups to each other and then identify the global solution. So based on all the information that we gathered from here, what kind of uh, parameters we are having, such as G-based and P-based and L-based, now we move to the implementation thing, how we have to implement it step by step. So each particle position varies in, in PSO when we have to implement that. There are two things that vary. One is position of particle. And then second is, its movement, how it moves, it can be defined in terms of velocity, how fast it moves or how slow movement it takes to the next level. So each particle changes its position according to its own experience as well as the information that it collects from the neighboring particles. So the surrounding particles are always sharing their information with each other. And when they share information, they are able to make decisions for the best fitness value and they keep on improving their condition after every iteration. So in this way, particles move toward the best solution and performance of each particle is measured based on the fitness function of the problem space in which we are working. Now in order to implement PSO, we have two things. One is particle velocity and other is particle position. Both of these are updated after each iteration and solution moves ahead to the best possible result. So what we can say in this case is that particle position is that the current information it is containing or maybe at current place where it is working and particle velocity decides its movement to the next level when it has to improve by certain step or Particle velocity can be higher or lower depending upon how big a step it can take to the next position. And all the variations are done in order to achieve the desired intensity value. For example, if we are working on an intensity kind of problem in an image. Or in case we have some other fitness condition, then we have to make improvement based on that objective function or fitness function. Then selection of PSO parameters. There are so many parameters in uh, PSO. And one good thing is that in PSO, we are not very much specific about using certain kind of parameters. We can add or remove parameters depending upon what kind of problem we are working. So usually we have these parameters. This is omega, C1, C2, Vmax, and swarm size S. So how each one of them is working in PSO. We will be discussing ahead. First of all, we come with the inertia weight that is omega. This inertia weight generally controls the momentum of the particle. For example, when omega is very, very less than one, only little momentum is preserved from the previous time step for a particular particle or we can say in nature, we can compare it with the bird and in a real time problem where we are implementing optimization, we can say the previous time step, uh, thus quick changes in direction are possible with this setting and it is mostly applicable to the local search because we have smaller uh, momentum, the particle can make smaller changes. And if we have a larger search space, this can be applied to this smaller area more efficiently because it can move easily in this particular area instead of in this entire area. So based on this, the Omega very, very less than one setting is often implemented for local search conditions. Secondly, we have Omega is equal to zero. And in this case, the concept of velocity is completely lost because it cannot preserve any information from the previous conditions. And the particle then moves in each step without knowledge of the past velocity because it loses its previous information or previous conditions and it's just take a step randomly to anywhere. So this is not applicable in all the conditions, but maybe in certain kind of problem domains, this particular situation may be also useful. So the third condition we have is omega is higher than one. In this case, particles can hardly change their direction and turn around, which of course implies a larger area of exploration as well as reluctance against convergence toward optimum solution. And this is usually applicable in case of global search because when the particles are taking larger step, they may have 
larger area to explore but when they are taking smaller step they can explore this smaller area but in this case we have one problem is that is the largest step can make this jump out of the problem space for example we are at this point at particular instance and then the next momentum that it takes it is very high and it just jump out of the problem space so in this case we have to define some criteria or some boundary conditions for this particular thing so that the algorithm works within this defined area in which problem we are working then we have constriction factor represented by x and it is basically a combination of this acceleration coefficients c1 and c2 the constriction coefficients results in quick convergence of the particles over time and though the particle converges to a point over time they have some specific condition to achieve the constriction coefficient also prevents the collapse now the constriction coefficient method therefore balances the need for local as well as global search depending upon what kind of particular optimization problem we are working so after this constriction factor we have maximum velocity or vmax area this is basically the boundary that we have discussed about just in previous slides this particular boundary we have to create for the algorithm then we use this vmax condition and it basically provides a control over outer area of the search space so that whenever the algorithm makes a step change or it uh, achieves a next momentum it do not jump out of the search space rather it stays within this area and keep on searching for the optimal solution then we have our swarm size this is initialized in the beginning of the algorithm always and uh, generally we start from the lesser number of swarm size for example we may start from 50 or 100 particles and then depending upon how the algorithm behaves for the particular problem area we can increase the swarm size and this will be defined with the help of that stopping condition that we discussed uh, in previous slides when the stopping condition sta states that the algorithm is not able to achieve the desired outcome within a defined time or maybe defined criteria then we can come back to the initial conditions and we can just update the swarm size and check the performance of algorithm again the acceleration coefficients we just discussed because they are used to form that extinction uh, the x factors and it basically describes the boundaries of the search space and it works in collaboration with that vmax factor because it has to define a particular area for the algorithm to work this uh, acceleration coefficient c1 and c2 we usually define between 0 to maybe 5 or 0 to 3 and we cannot state that this particular value is uh, right for this acceleration coefficient because it varies depending upon what kind of problem we are working so we usually start from the smaller one and after every iteration when we check the performance of the algorithm we can change the value of this c1 and c2 and check the performance of the algorithm how it behaves for that problem domain so these are some initial parameters that we change if the target value is not achieved and we can make these changes after every evaluation and check the performance of the algorithm then we have mathematical functions we can have rmsc this is commonly used fitness function we can have some other uh, values also maybe msc or psnr etc there are so many things that we can implement in case of pso and this is basically the fitness function that we have to minimize or maximize it can be in case of rmsc we basically work on minimization factor so optimization is implied in such a manner that rmsc reduce after every uh, the stage that we achieve in optimization so what we are doing in this case is this is a particular formula that we use this is basically the comparison between restored images and true images in case we are working on that image problem that i am discussing from previous slides that if we have certain image on which we are working there may be some degraded intensity levels and some fine intensity levels so what we have to do is we need to restore those degraded intensity level to the finer ones so in this case what we can do is we have certain restored image we have a true image we need to compare them uh, every time and then this rmsc value is required to be improved 
we have to reduce this in such a manner that both these images appear equivalent or they are uh, more optimized to show the results. While implementing this PSO algorithm, we have these two important uh, equations. So first we have to find certain uh, finish value, then how the equations update after every uh, iteration. This is printed here. So this first one is velocity equation. The second one is our position equation, or we can say that uh, particle position is changing after every iteration. So in first case, what parameters we are having, the V max that we were defining as a boundary values. Then we have these C1, C2, the acceleration coefficients, some random values, random numbers are generated between 0 and 1. Then we have this present best value and G best value. And we have this particle position uh, information. So all these things are utilized to achieve the next velocity value for our uh, given uh, problem space. So this particular equation is a standard equation that we are using for several problems, but it is not that we have to use this particular equation only for all the problems because it is possible to add and remove some additional parameters depending upon what kind of study we are, you are working upon and maybe you can have some additional omega factor here maybe you can add some other coefficients here depending upon what you have to achieve at final stage and after every iteration we make updates to these two equations so how the entire algorithm works actually First of all, we initialize the particles, or we can say that we initialize the swarm size, uh, maybe 50 uh, so particles or maybe hundreds or thousands of particles. Then we have, we estimate the intensity of particle as objective function when we are working on the image problem. In case of some other uh, problems, uh, we can have some different objective function. Then what we do is for each particle, we calculate its fitness value. If this fitness value is better than the P best value of that particle, we simply update that P best value to the current fitness value. What we are trying to do is we are evaluating the fitness value of every particle. And if after next iteration, some there are some improvements, we just update those improved values to the problem space. So after updating this, P best value, present best values of every particle. We just try to compare those P best values of every particle and we identify the global best value by comparing those all P best values. And then the best P best value is updated as G best value and all other parameters or all other particles in the problem space are targeted to achieve that G best value after every iteration. And for this, what we do is we calculate the velocity and position of the particle using uh, the previously studied equations of B and X. And those are implemented based on these, based on these two equations, we implement them. And then we update them, uh, them after every iteration. And this is the flow chart for the algorithm implementation. We are initializing the population. Then we are defining the objective function. Then we are initializing the velocity and position values. We have decided RMSC as our objective function and there is some threshold set to this. We have to achieve that particular value. For example, we need to reduce RMSC below 0.5. Then that we have to decide that threshold at 0.5. And then we have to compare all the conditions to achieve this particular uh, value. Evaluate fitness of each particle and then update the P best and accordingly update G best values. Based on that information, we change the particle velocity and position after every iteration. Now again, compare this RMSC to the threshold value. If it is achieved, then fine. Otherwise, we just come back to the initial condition and we change the parameters. There are different advantages of PSO. And uh, the first one is that it is insensitive to scaling of the design variables. We can add or remove variables depending upon our conditions. This is an efficient global search algorithm. It can be also implemented at local conditions in neighborhood conditions, and we can have some global search implementations also. There are very few algorithm parameters and they can be updated as per the requirement of the problem. 
it is derivative free and it is easily parallelized for concurrent processing and comparatively simple in implementation as compared to other optimization algorithms application in which it can work is first one we have object tracking then we have path planning then we have signal processing telecommunication image processing artificial neural networks these are just few examples there are so many other things where pso can be implemented so if we have to implement this pso thing in digital image processing there are so many things on which we are working uh, there are visualization image sharpening restoration retrieval measurement of certain pat pattern and uh, recognition of image but one of the common example i can state here is that image restoration on which we are working right from the first slide i'm discussing this that we have an degraded image and we have a fine image so what we call this kind of problem this is basically we have the solution with us we are implementing a supervised learning technique because we know what we have to achieve and we have to make improvements based on that every time so this pso can be implemented on blind images as well as on non blind images in case of blind images we don't have an idea about the target but in case of uh, unblind images we have some idea about the target that we have to achieve so this pso can be implemented in both condition with some variation in parameters so for example when we have this degraded image one and this finer image two what we have to do is we have to change the intensity values of these degraded pixels to achieve the finer ones that are in this image so after every iteration the intensity of these degraded particles or the degraded pixels will be improved to achieve the best values and then the target will be optimized accordingly then one of the common questions that uh, researchers have while implementing this pso thing or uh, other optimization algorithm is that at which stage we actually implement this uh, optimization so in general we have a problem space like this so first of all we have certain degradation function for that image it is degraded by a certain value we may have some external noise and then we can implement some restoration filter so this degradation function stage at this stage we can imply that pso or some other optimization algorithm this external noise it can be removed with the help of restoration filter so this is a common example where pso can be implied in restoration techniques when we have to implement pso for image processing our major focus is on degradation function we are just trying to implement a uh, certain matlab codes and you can have some scilab codes also to uh, optimize that de de degradation function to ensure that the restored image achieve the finest contrast or it can provide the best possible values at output so in this case what we have i'm just presenting a general formulation of the uh, code how it works but instead of providing it here i'm just sharing the screen of matlab how it works with the uh, the pso program in general works so this is basically an optimization function uh, we can say that this is the thing that we have to optimize this is a simple mathematical equation that we are trying to optimize here and based on this we have decided some constraints and a penalty for the system and based on this we have designed the main pso algorithm whatever we have studies is implemented here first of all we have this boundary conditions so that the area stays confined and algorithm works in that particular bounded area then we have the population size 500 we have inertia weight values minimum and maximum in some algorithms this may be uh, avoided and in some algorithm it is implemented this is a general implementation i am showing but when we have to implement in some uh, specific problem we can have some variations in these parameters then comes this acceleration factors here comes one and two value we have assigned we can change these values and the outcome of the algorithm will be also updated accordingly then we have iteration numbers and further we define this is velocity conditions then we define the g best values we define the p best values here then we update the inertia weight so step by step we have designed a system for updating all the values 
position update uh, to handle boundary violations we have a specific uh, criteria then to evaluate that for fitness function that we have uh, often that we have in this uh, the function we have dec uh, decided earlier in this case we have a mathematical equation in the slide we were studying the same thing for rmsc so the fitness function or the objective functions will be defined by the researcher uh, depending upon in which problem they are working then after every iteration we are updating the values and what kind of output it is giving us i'm just showing you by running this program so how it works is it is updating the coefficient values after every iteration and then finally we have this converges characteristics so how the parameters are converging because we are minimizing the objective function was to minimize something so we can see that this thing is minimized here now this particular pattern we have achieved with this setting of parameters at initial stage we have this for example if i make certain changes to any of these for example i change this c1 and c2 value the explanation coefficient i change from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 now we can see some change in that convergence characteristic if i run this now you will find certain variation in that convergence characteristic see this is a a different pattern we have achieved now so based on the problem that we are trying to achieve we can make changes to these initial parameters and check the variation of our algorithm so based on this i am also defining certain example from the medical image segmentation with pso this is a general example we can discuss how the about how pso can be implemented in this so first of all this is actually taken from a published paper from some other researcher i'm just providing you some insights to how they have used this pso thing in their problem so first of all what they have worked upon is they have four things in their uh, data set first one is gray matter they have white matter then they have cerebrospinal fluid uh, fluid and then they have the abnormal tissue in the problem space so this was basically related to the segmentation of mr brain images using particle swarm optimization and they have also implemented another uh, differential evolution algorithm so this was a comparison between these two the aim of segmentation of mr images that those researchers used is to study anatomical structure of the brain images then comes to identify the region of interest uh, maybe to locate tumor or some other uh, abnormalities and to measure the tissue size to help the treatment planning depending upon uh, what kind of uh, disease the person is having so there are so many application on which researchers can work in future and this is just a outline of what things can be implemented what literature survey they have implemented the researchers from this uh, where this data is taken the segmentation of mr images has remained a challenge for image segmentation area and this is due to the partial volume effects the partial movements blood circulation and respiration issues of while taking measurement from a patient the existence of image noise the presence of some smoothly varying intensity in homogeneities and the fact that the differential anatomical structures may share some contrast in the uh, outcomes some uh, tissue outcomes other than this there are so many techniques that can be implemented we can do uh, this uh, a pro this segmentation based on edge based on region based on thresholding it is possible to implement ann structures it is possible to apply data fusion methods uh, there are few other hybrid methods also that can be implemented but in this area researchers have basically worked on the thresholding condition and how they have proceeded ahead first of all they acquired some mr brain images this mr brain mri images were obtained from the different sections of human brain and then they were grouped into different sections so the particular data set they used is taken from brain web and then they analyzed those mri images that were generated from the simulator mri simulator 
so this particular data was implemented and then in order to start the segmentation the first analysis was that mr brain images were classified based on these three parameters the gray matter the white matter and then comes the cerebrospinal fluid these three things were applied and then there was the fourth region that was the background region for those images when we have to do segmentation we can either do based on these three areas or we can do based on this background region also so that in that case we will have four uh, classifications every region have certain gray level it have some white level and then the cff region and we have defined it based on that the white matter is having uh, white conditions the cf uh, sf region is showing the gray level then we uh, it is defined with the black one and then comes the gray level that we have defined between black and white level in between of both those so when we have to implement this thresholding we are applying this multi level thresholding and how it is implied we have decided two threshold level here and the third one is the remaining area so we are calling it a three level thresholding because we are dividing into three different classes first we have decided a threshold for the gray level secondly we have decided a threshold for that uh, gm region the first was for white matter region then the second was for gray matter and third was for the the remaining pixels were assigned to the csl region in case we have to implement four level thresholding what can we can have is the first is for white matter second is for gray matter second is for csl and fourth region we can define for the background so in this case we have three different thresholding conditions and we are classifying into four levels so how we are implementing the optimization in this particular case we are first initializing the parameters number of thresholds then we have to input the mri Im brain images we are calculating the histogram because in this particular case the researchers have worked on histogram based information that in histogram based information was shared with the uh, remaining uh, population or we can say particles in the population then we compute the probability of occurrence of each gray level because we have defined different threshold level then we have to identify those occurrence and then this pso is implemented on every threshold level just to segment those areas and then a fuzzy partition based on that probabilistic information is generated so evaluation the researchers made is based on the psnr uh, values and they have also used the msc conditions and rmsc values so in this case they are using rmsc as fitness function so after every iteration they have to identify whether the classification is accurate or not so based on this they have evaluated some information and finally they obtained these results so for the both optimization algorithm that they implemented they have used for three classes and four classes the thresholding levels were changed and based on that the psnr values were compared so these kind of implementation can be made for some other applications also so this was just an generalized idea of how pso is implemented in a, a specific problem space so this was uh, mainly all about pso that how we implement it and how it is taken to the uh, real life problems and how we can adjust the parameters depending upon problem space and now i welcome the queries of the participants if they have some uh, issues to discuss or maybe some ideas to share they can present uh, now